Hey everybody, what's up? Happy Friday and happy Tay Day. If you're like me, you didn't get very much sleep last night because Taylor Swift's 11th album, The Tortured Poets Department, dropped at midnight. And you can see I got my new hoodie on, I'm representing. And there was even more new music than we were already crazy anticipating when the whole thing turned into a surprise double album at 2 a.m. I mean, it's hard out here for a Swifty. We'll get more to the surprise double album later. But first, let's take a look at the proper standard edition. You know, part of the art of being Taylor Swift is embodying the every girl, and then when she got older, the every woman. Beyonce's a goddess, right? Taylor's a real life human, just like us. But there's a moment on the Tortured Poets Department when she embraces her power as the most famous, the most influential woman, certainly in America, if not on the whole planet. And that moment occurs on Who's Afraid of Little Old Me? I was tame, I was gentle, till the circus life made me mean. Don't you worry, folks, we took out all her teeth. Who's afraid of a little old me? Well, you should be. And you can bet that Swift's most recent exes the 1975 frontman Maddie Healy, and especially British actor Joe Alwyn, have been quaking in their boots ever since the pop superstar announced the Tortured Poets Department. Sure enough, there's plenty of bad blood spilled on Swift's latest, and man, she keeps it raw. This sounds like it's her IGGAF era, and we all know what that stands for. But then again, Taylor, like many of us, hasn't been the same since the pandemic. It really all changed, you know, with Folklore in 2020, in the middle of the pandemic, you know? That was kind of the album that connected all of us in the midst of isolation. But her trusted tandem from Folklore, Bleacher's frontman Jack Antonoff, and the national lead singer Aaron Dessner, they're back in the songwriting squad on the Tortured Poets Department. But one Folklore collaborator who isn't back is Joe Allen. After their six year relationship ended last year, he gets the Taylor treatment on So Long London. That's a long goodbye, and when I say long, I'm talking nine minutes and 28 seconds. And then there's Maddie Healy, who Swift dated briefly after she split up with Joe last year. He seems to be the target of her pen on the vicious takedown, the smallest man who ever lived. That title pretty much says it all. But fear not, folks. All the love is not lost on the Tortured Poets Department. There's a song called The Alchemy, which is all about that sexy chemistry that Taylor has got going on with her current beau, Travis Kelsey. Where's the trophy? He just comes running over to me. She's singing about that moment at the Super Bowl where she dashed over to plant that big smooch at the end of the game. All of a sudden, our girl is living the dream again. If there's one knock against the Tortured Poets Department, it's that the timing feels a bit off. Taylor's in the middle of her epic Eras tour. She just won a record fourth album of the year Grammy for Midnight. And she's a freaking billionaire now at 34. So how exactly are we supposed to identify with her tortured heart again? And yet we can't shake her off. But back to that surprise double album. My theory is that it was a last minute pivot after the original album leaked on Wednesday. The rest of these new tracks that came out at 2 a.m. again last night, they feel like bonus tracks that would have ultimately shown up on the deluxe editions down the road. But what can I say? That surprise drop, that's Taylor Swift for you. And now for my past week in music. We went from Strawberry Fields to Primrose Hill. That's the name of the new single by James McCartney who is Sir Paul's only son with his late wife, Linda. And get this, it was co-written by Sean Ono Lennon, who was John Lennon's youngest son from his marriage to Yoko Ono. And the next generation, man, they do their papas proud. The song, which is actually named after a public park in London, is the first ever collaboration between McCartney and Lennon, the next generation. And it kind of feels like taking a stroll in the park. It's kind of familiar, the dreamy mood, and McCartney's lilting delivery, but it never seems to feel like it's trying to copy the Beatles. Nor does it ever reach the heights of the Beatles. I mean, how could it? Speaking of the Beatles, this week it was announced that the Beatles 1970 documentary, Let It Be, 
which had never been on any streaming service. No Blu-ray disc or DVD, nothing like that. It will finally begin streaming on Disney Plus May 8th. Better late than never, 54 years later. Last weekend I got to check out the hottest ticket in New York City, which was Bad Bunny's Most Wanted Tour. It had three sold out nights at Barclays Center. This was my first Bad Bunny concert and the crowd was hype. Everybody was rocking their cowboy hats, waving their Puerto Rican flags, and the show was hot. There was even a whole orchestra to open the show. And Bad Bunny, or Benito, as the OG fans call him, was on fire. He even sang on top of the Brooklyn Bridge at one point. Well, not quite. But he sure did make it look like that inside the iconic arena. And we all had these glow-in-the-dark cowboy boot necklaces. Mine somehow didn't stop glowing until three days after the show. Now you know that was a good party. Remember back in the day when you had to wait in line to get tickets at the box office? Or even at the mall? Sometimes overnight. This was all before the internet. Well, some of you may be too young to remember that. But Maggie Rogers took us back to a time before we were all slaves to our phones and computers. And the real fans, they did whatever it took to get those concert tickets when they went on sale. Celebrating box office week with the release of her new album, Don't Forget Me Last Weekend, she had her diehards out in full force, waiting in line for blocks at New York's Irving Plaza to buy tickets to her Madison Square Garden show in October. And the lucky fans even got treated to some love from Maggie herself. She showed up to meet and greet and take pics with them. And the luckiest of all the fans got to attend an exclusive club show at Irving Plaza later that night. Maggie has been doing these box office week appearances in other cities all week. And she wraps up in Chicago tonight. So let's leave the light on for Maggie. And now it's time for my weekend picks. I'm going to start with that Billy Joel concert special that everybody was hot that CBS cut it off on Sunday night. They're re-airing it in full tonight, so check that out. My next pick, Coachella. Even if you weren't able to make it out there, there's a live stream on YouTube so you can check out all the action. And my third pick, my girl Alicia Keys. Her new musical, Hell's Kitchen, is premiering on Broadway on Saturday. So it's the perfect time to relive, revisit some of her great albums of the past. And it doesn't get much better than her first three albums. Songs in A Minor, The Diary of Alicia Keys, and As I Am. So let that be your playlist for this weekend. Catch you next week.